Hi folks, Pastor Guy here, Country Cowboy Church Gathering out in Aptos, California. Thanks for joining us. Hey, today marks the 19th anniversary that we want to remember things that happened on 9-11. And I want to start this service off with the flag salute to our country. Will you join me, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag, the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And all God's children said, Amen. Thanks, folks. I did want to take some time to just reflect on how angry man gets sometimes when it's unfortunate. We need to seek for something better than destroying each other. We need to seek the love of God. It's a little song here. I want to do with you. Start things off. Amazing grace and sweet set with a sacred wretch like me. Once was lost, now I'm back, blind, but now I see. Grace taught my heart to fear, grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace come be? The hour of the story. God's gift to you. Amen. Amen. So I was thinking about what I want to talk to you about today. So I had to actually make a little outline here. I thought it'd be a little bit better so I can get through some things and some points I want to make sure that I make. Um, so let's just jump right in. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's been lots of things going on, folks. We're reflecting back on 9-11, what happened 19 years ago. Look what's happening right now. we got this COVID thing going around. People are getting sick. The economy shut down. People are afraid, nervous. What's going to happen? I live here in California. We were evacuated for nine days because of fire. Thank God the fire moved. But I feel for all these people that are still in the fire's way. There's been over a 1,000 homes been destroyed. And that's just in this area. There's hundreds of thousands of acres that are burning throughout the West Coast. Washington, Oregon, California. God, be with the firefighters. Be with the folks of these communities. Keep them safe and protect them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But there's actually a lot more encouragement in what that says than sometimes what we look at when we read it. So let me go through this really quick. In this verse, you might think at first uh, that there's, well, it is, kind of says what it says. But Paul wrote these words while facing some of the worst trials of his life. Despite the threat of pain and death, he realized that God gives us strength in ways that go beyond the good times And the everything, uh, everything is okay. The strength of Christ reaches right down into the turmoil and pain. And it's there that we can truly do all things 
Here's three surprising ways that this happens. We get encouragement, one, through trials. When we think of victory, we often envision champions with trophies, medals, spotlights, TV coverages. We think of parades, celebration, but true victory often happens far away from the crowd. In Christ, we certainly see joy, joyful times, just as anyone does. But what truly sets us apart as followers of Jesus is that we can find victory in the most difficult of times, just like Paul. James knew that type of struggle very well, and yet he could honestly say, and this is in James 1, 2-4, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I know for myself when I go through trials and tribulations, it's hard going through it. And I keep praying, God, you're going to get me to the other side. And when we actually do, what joy. It's like, wow, we accomplished something. We made it through this. Thank you, God. Why was I ever doubting in the first place? But when you're in the midst of the storm, it's difficult. Two nights ago, 3 o'clock, it's orange, gray, almost black. It seemed like nighttime. And it was scary out there. The skies I had never seen that way in my life from all the smoke and the fires. And it just was... Uh, it was awe. It was, I was at awe. It was eerie, spooky. It's like, how could this happen? You know, man doesn't have enough lights and stuff to do any trick graphic arts to create something like that. Mother Nature and God, they can do it in the blink of an eye. So it was kind of scary. But we got through it, and we're stronger because of it, and I want to take joy in that. Christ gives us strength not only to endure the tough times, but also to grow during them. We aren't meant just to slog through the pain. We're meant to see our faith blossom right in the face of our battles. God equips us with the armor we need to stand firm. Ephesians 6.13 says, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. You stood your ground, now stay there, be there. Isn't that awesome? I think so. That's the kind of strength that Jesus gives us. Persevere through. You can also get encouragement through contentment. If there's ever a fight that goes on in, our, in us humans, it's a constant struggle to be content. Disappointment, setbacks, and delays keep hammering at us. Apart from Christ, we'd quickly trip and stumble our way into bitterness and entitlement. After all, this world tells us that we deserve to be happy. It's easy to buy in to that mindset. We're entitled to be here, and we're supposed to be good stewards of this world. We're supposed to take care of our neighbors as ourselves. Well, what are we entitled to? To share the love of God. He's going to give that to us. It's called grace, and we already sang about it. So contentment. Everyone wants to be content, but guess what? There's going to be trials, tribulations, things that make us grow, things that make us mature. But in Christ, we move our eyes off the things we don't have. The frustrations that surround us, we put them where they need to be. Paul's words from prison show this spiritual truth in action. Philippians 4.12, I know what is it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Because why? He still knows he's got the love of Jesus. Nothing can harm us and take us away from that. You know, I lost a home in an earthquake back in 92, and when we had to evacuate from this home, it was kind of scary because I knew what I had to go through when that happened. But I also know I came out the other side better. So 
But I said, okay, God, whatever this is, lead me and guide me. And you're going to take me through this because it must be something I need to learn. And I hope you keep that same mindset. How can we have this type of contentment? By turning our attention from what we think we need to the only thing that truly matters. In Matthew 6, 32, For pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And when they say we can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives us strength, that means because we are focused on God's kingdom and how he would lead us, Jesus will give you the strength you need to accomplish those things. But we have to be focused on what God would have us do and how he would lead us. That's the important part of this. And if you're doing that, you'll be amazed on how your life can turn around. After all, our hope isn't in what we have or don't have here on earth. Our hope is in Christ. Jesus gives us strength to see beyond our present circumstances and to trust in him to provide everything we truly need. We get encouragement through his victory. Our greatest victory, however, isn't really ours at all. We can face any situation and be content no matter what happens because of one important fact, and it's this. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's in 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Jesus died in our place, came back to life as a true conqueror, conquered over death. And he accomplished, <clears throat> he accomplished, gets credit to our account. We didn't earn a single bit of it, but he's guaranteed us so much. In John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me, this is Jesus talking, in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you God. He put to death he was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. 1 Peter 3.18 There's a fresh start. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5.17 So he won the victory. We get to share the prize. Now that's how we are and can truly do all things through Christ, who gives us strength. Amen. Amen. And Christ does give us strength. God gives us strength through Christ. And I know our world's going through lots of different things. And I still want to remember those who suffer through gives us the strength that we need and we can do all things through him. Reach out to God. Have him lead you. 
follow his ways in everything that you do. Until we meet again, be good to each other. Remember, you got to keep praying and you wait for God's answer. Until next time, folks, be well. God bless you.